we take a look around the amazing Royal Yacht Britannia, the Queen's own private yacht, including taking a peek at her bedrooms, dining rooms, studies and more. Well ahoy there cruisers and welcome to Edinburgh in Scotland. I think you can guess where we are today. We are by the amazing HMS Royal Yacht Britannia. Yes, Royal. This was Queen Elizabeth's second yacht from 1953 all the way up until 1997 until she was retired. We're going to take a look around this amazing, amazing museum, floating museum. Whilst we can't cruise, what's the best way to do it? Get on a Royal Yacht, of course. So come on, let's go. The Royal Yacht Britannia sailed the equivalent of around the world once a year, calling it over 600 ports in 135 different countries. So we've just boarded the Britannia and we're on the open deck, the flag deck is what it's called, and we're going to take a look at the bridge. Let's go. Sailors. So we're on the bridge here on the Royal Yacht Britannia. It's a lot smaller than I imagined it was going to be actually. I kind of thought it'd be a lot bigger, did you Ben? I did. Yeah, uh, but this is where the Admiral would be and he controls the ship from here and it's got all of the original equipment that was here when the ship was built. It's actually really interesting. It's lots of phones, lots of switches, lots of dials, very old fashioned way of navigation. The yacht wasn't actually steered from the bridge. Commands had to be called down through metal pipes to a helmsman located in the wheelhouse on one deck below. The ship was built in Scotland by John Brown and Company, one of the most famous shipyards in the world, having even built the famous cruise liners Queen Elizabeth and Queen Mary. The Queen smashed a bottle of Empire wine because champagne was considered too extravagant in post-war Britain and named her Britannia. I named the ship Britannia. May God bless her and all who sail in her. Let's go one deck down to the Royal Deck. This is where the Admiral's quarters and office could be found. The Admiral had the most spacious crew cabins on the yacht. It included a bedroom, a bathroom and a day cabin, which also functioned as his office and conference room. When the royal family were on board, the Admiral often dined with them, particularly during official events. When they were not on board, he would dine in his day cabin. When Britannia was built in 1953, a garage to house a car on board was considered essential. The garage would hold a Rolls Royce and Land Rover. During the later years, when transport was more reliable in foreign ports, the garage would store beer. You may notice the windows here are higher. That's because they are the royal residences, so there's no peeking. The veranda deck was where the royal family could relax. Up here they would play games, paint and occasionally a pop-up swimming pool for the children would be erected. During the right weather, official functions were also held out here. The Sun Lounge was the Queen's favourite room on the ship and it's easy to see why it's so bright. She would enjoy breakfast, morning coffee breaks and afternoon tea in here. It also has its own bar for cocktails. Perfect. And just behind we have the Royal Residences. These were strictly only for the Royals on board. First up is the Queen's bedroom. Wow, it's so lovely. Notice that she only has a single bed because the Duke of Edinburgh has a separate bedroom. There's only one double room on board Britannia. This was brought on board by Prince Charles and Diana for their honeymoon in 1981. Fun fact, nobody else can go to bed until the Queen chooses to retire. And this is the Duke of Edinburgh's bedroom, decorated in a more masculine style. They had separate bathrooms, but there was a connecting door to the Queen's cabin. There are 16 other bedrooms located elsewhere on Britannia, which were used by the royal family and big dignitaries such as President Clinton and Mrs Clinton. Britannia had a crew of 220, and when the Royal Family were on board, she also carried a platoon of Royal Marines. There were different classes among the crew and officers on board the ship. This is the ward room for the officers on board, and this is where they'd come to relax when they're not on duty. It even had its own bar. 
the dining room next door is where they'd eat and it was considered a formal occasion. Just along is the main galley. There was also separate rooms that held the chinaware and the silverware. This brings us to the huge state dining room that had a massive 32 seat mahogany table. As Britannia was officially British territory, the Queen would host many banquets and receptions here. During state dinners, the Queen would always sit on the port side of the dining table. And it wasn't just used for royal occasions. During the day, the Queen and the other members of the royal family would enjoy a buffet luncheon here. So here's the Queen's private sitting room where she'd even work whilst on holiday. And just opposite we have the Duke's private study. Over his desk is a model of the HMS Magpie, a ship he once commanded. The grand staircase from the Royals' quarters led down to the state drawing room. This was floral and homely. The Queen really wanted it to feel like it was her own home and resemble an English country home. She wanted a real fire in here, but they informed her they would have to have a crew member on watch at all times when it was lit. Evenings here would involve playing cards, socialising, watching the TV which is hidden in the room, or watching full screen movies in the dining room. And the crew deck was located one deck below. Here you found several bars depending on what rank you were, and some very close living quarters. There's, I think, eight people in this tiny little room. Wow, it's a little bit different to the Queen's quarters, don't you say? And another fun fact, until 1973, the crew actually slept on hammocks. Then they were swapped out for these, well, I'm not sure about comfortable, but beds. The pubs on board were known for their carnival-like atmosphere and somewhere where the crew could relax. Even Elon Musk is enjoying himself. Here's another one of the pubs on board. This one resembles more of an upscale pub or club. The bars were on board to make the crew members feel more at home. Crew quarters varied depending on the hierarchy of the officers. The higher up you were, the nicer and the more spacious your crew cabins were. The ship had its own mail room and just next door was the hospital, which included a consulting room, a hospital ward and an operating theatre. The ship's doctor only took care of the officers and crew, a royal physician would look after the royals. The ship had a huge laundry on board which was something very unique. Temperatures in here though could get up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Oof, that must have been very hard work. And finally, we got to peek into the engine area, including the engine cabins and offices. The yacht had 12,000 horsepower engine, powered by steam and allowing speeds of up to 25 miles per hour. The engine plant on board has been unchanged since the 1950s. And here we have one of the shower and washrooms for the crew, for up to 20 people at a time. Oh my gosh, it must have been complete chaos. There's also a small exhibition inside and outside which ends the tour. Wow, what an amazing tour, that was really awesome. Um, yeah, it was interesting and it was, as Ben kept saying, it was strange because you're at points where history was made. So it was really cool. And do you know what guys, it was nice to be on a ship. It was nice to be back on a ship. We didn't go anywhere, but I absolutely loved it. So that's it for this episode and this amazing look around the HMS Royal Britannia. 
wow, what an incredible place. We were so surprised how much of the ship you actually get to see. We even got to see where the, the queen sleeps. She doesn't share a bed with Prince Philip. So that must have been an interesting relationship. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment in the section below to see if you liked the video and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go on, we're watching you. And thank you so much to all of our patrons. Patron of the week is Betty and Jeff. That's it till next time. Happy cruising.